I received a very interesting question on um, runes and symbols and magical languages. If these yeah, powers are actually um, sentient, if they live in a place on their own, if they have a free will or if they are just existing. And the answer is actually um, to a point. Um, a symbol is in a way a, uh, an incarnation of a higher power of force. So if I have a symbol representing the sun, it is in a way an incarnation of the sun. It's the sun made limited, more solid. And every symbol, symbols for eyes, for rain, for light, for darkness, for um, love, for power, um, are in a way yeah, incarnations, more limited versions of that uh, of that higher principle and just like we are also incarnations of our yeah, of our souls of our uh, beings and we want to yeah remain true to ourselves to our path so also the symbol will try to do that so a healing symbol will want to be used for healing a power symbol will want to be used for power a connection symbol wants to be used for connecting things and the energy in itself is usually relatively neutral it's it wants to manifest itself and this is also why it forms a symbol and this symbol form helps it to be seen by people in the astral who can then yeah give it shape into the physical world who can give it a form so that it can be shared to people and through its form by being written down in many places especially if the object or form is, uh, is blessed, is reconnected to the source, it gives the power a way to manifest, to um, yeah, do its thing upon the world. So symbols like um, existing, they like to be blessed, they like to be able to, uh, to manifest their power, it is their reason for living. Um, if a symbol, however, is used incorrectly or abused, uh, so that if, if it is used for a purpose which is not in concert with uh, yeah, why it exists, so you use, I don't know, the symbol for the sun to represent light, not the sun itself, uh, or the other way around, uh, then that symbol will be yeah, frustrated or irritated or yeah, it won't feel right to the symbol to uh, to do that because ultimately it is um, it's also like a slave because it cannot write itself down, it cannot manifest its own energy. It has to be written down or to be spoken uh, by somebody, and the person who writes it down or speaks it does it in a certain context, in a certain way, which can. Uh, shape the power of the symbol and yeah the symbol is while it holds power it is also a slave to its master and just like a slave has power but it also is forced into obedience and if yeah you don't treat a slave well you ask things from it which are beyond its power or which are yeah unnatural to its own path of development then it will start to resent its master, it will start to resent its service. And symbols can uh, depower themselves, so they can try to start to withhold their power from the people who are abusing it. And symbols are not very particular, so they don't go usually like, okay, the way you sing me is very very nice I will yeah manifest myself for you but the way you sing me ah oh, that's horrible I won't manifest myself for you they tend to be more global like am I being used well is my are my incarnations because it is a symbol is in a way a, a collective are my incarnations being used well by humanity if yes then I will grant my blessings and my power to humanity to use if humanity starts abusing me or using me wrongly, then I will stop being used by humanity. 
and of course it is possible for a person to um, yeah, get in, in an exception position that the symbol will not see you as just one of humanity and that you alone will have a good relationship with that symbol while the rest of humanity doesn't anymore. Um, that can happen. You can build up your personal relationship with that power and with that symbol. Uh, but definitely um, how it generally goes is a symbol is in a way envisioned or given to uh, a person who understands it. Uh, that person then shares his both the form and its understanding with his students. And those students start, well they don't understand it completely, but they share it with their students and it tends to filter down and it ends up with lots of people using it without understanding it, without really being able to attune to its energy, to know its purpose. Um, and they will start using it in an incorrect way and ultimately the symbol will lose its power and it will be lost to humanity. And then of course a new yeah, um, person will have to be inspired and guided to find a new form of that same symbol until humanity in a way screws it up again and loses it again. So there are several ways to prevent that. One of them is of course to uh, not share the symbol. Um, or only to share it to people who have um, well enough understanding about it. Or you can also teach people how to find symbols, which layer of the astral to travel into, so they can make contact with the essence of the symbol and the power behind the symbol. And I think if you teach people to make a contact and have a communication with the power behind the symbol, they will use the symbol in the correct way. But most People want to use symbols as a shortcut, like I don't want to think about it, I just want to have power or I want this person to be healed or to be strong or whatnot. So I'll just use this or that or such and so form. And ta-da, <laughs> it will happen. So many people are in a way, you could say like computer users rather than computer programmers. They don't know how a computer works. They don't know how a program is constructed why a program is constructed in a certain way, they just know which to press, press F5 or to press enter or to click this button or radio button to have a certain result. And if you get too many users and not enough programmers, then ultimately the thing goes buggy and it stops working. Because the relationship between humanity and the power of the symbol needs to be maintained. So in a way you need debuggers and yeah, system administrators to keep the program working so that the users can use it. So if humanity doesn't invest enough in the relationship between our race and the power, ultimately that power will be lost to us. And if the power is more exclusive, only used by, yeah, you could say the programming elite, the yeah, system administrator elite, then yeah, it won't, it will be a very well maintained power with very little degradation by all the users who are trying to use it in very bad and idiotic and inappropriate ways, which will ultimately crash the program. So, yeah, symbols have, in a way, a life of their own or a relationship of their own uh, with humanity. And um, this is also what makes um, alien uh, impulses, alien symbols so interesting because um, they have already a working relationship, a working power relationship with other powers. And these other, yeah, spirits can inspire us to also use these forms, make them available to humanity. But if humanity uh, abuses them, uh, because symbols are in a way neutral, at least in the beginning, but if we yeah, cannot learn how to use these symbols, we only use them in the yeah, program user way rather than try to become programmers ourselves, then yeah, ultimately they will stop functioning for us. So you find that often if a symbol, as a symbol is introduced, it will have power. And 
these things don't happen overnight but usually within five or six years these symbols will yeah, start losing power or the power itself will become very chaotic or unpredictable or um, the symbol will become less safe to work with and of course if you have evolved yourself by working with that symbol to the programmer level you've made contact with the force behind the symbol then also you can work with it without the symbol even but also you can keep on using the symbol um, just to anchor the power you know within you or within the cosmos so thank you for posing this uh, very very interesting question i hope that uh, there will be more members of uh, of the site who will uh, bring up uh, interesting topics like this so thank you very much for listening and enjoy exploring symbol space